Have you ever had a teacher with literally no common sense? So I'm sitting in Mr. Peterson's chemistry class on what started as just another boring Tuesday afternoon, and we're doing this experiment with some seriously strong chemicals. Peterson had wheeled out this ancient cart loaded with bottles that looked like they belonged in a mad scientist's lair. Murky liquids in glass containers with labels so faded you could barely read them. The whole room already smells like rotten eggs mixed with bleach, that sharp, acrid stench that makes your nose burn. The fluorescent lights overhead cast this sickly green tint over the lab tables. Peterson's droning on about molecular bonds, but I can barely focus because the smell keeps getting stronger. That's when I notice the ventilation system sounds different, weaker, like it's struggling. Suddenly, this girl, Sarah, who sits two tables over, starts coughing really bad. Not just a little throat-clearing cough, but these deep, harsh sounds that echo through the classroom. Her face is turning red, then almost purple. Her eyes are streaming tears, and she's clutching her chest. She raises her hand with obvious effort and croaks out between coughing fits. Mr. Peterson, I can't breathe properly. Can I please step outside for some fresh air? And this man, I kid you not, barely glances up from his clipboard, looks at her struggling to breathe like she's just being a nuisance. And says dismissively, not during lab time, Sarah. You need to tough it out. This builds character. Young people today don't know what real discomfort is. Sarah's coughing gets worse, and now three other kids are starting to feel sick too. Emma near the window is holding her stomach and looking green. The smell is definitely getting stronger. This nauseating chemical cocktail that makes my throat feel raw. I swear something's not mixing right in the fume hood at the front. There's this weird hissing sound, and the air around it looks shimmery, like heat waves. But Peterson just keeps going with his lesson like nothing's happening. Sir, I interrupt. Something's definitely wrong with the ventilation system. We should probably evacuate. Enough, he shouts spinning around with his face flushed red. Nobody leaves this classroom. This generation is too soft. Back in my day, we didn't run crying from a little chemical smell. That's when I notice it. Yellow-green gas starting to pool near the ceiling like toxic fog. It's subtle at first, but definitely there and spreading. My phone buzzes. A text from my mom who works as a respiratory therapist. Honey, if you ever smell chlorine gas in chemistry class, get out immediately. Don't wait, don't ask permission. It can kill you within minutes. My heart stops. I show the text to Jake sitting next to me and his eyes go wide. We both look up at that yellow-green cloud that's gotten noticeably thicker. Sarah's now doubled over, dry heaving violently. Mr. Peterson, we need to leave now, Jake shouts, jumping up so fast his stool clatters to the floor. This isn't about being tough. This is dangerous. Sit down or you're all getting zeros and detention, Peterson screams back. I will not tolerate this mass hysteria. That's it. I grab Sarah's arm and start heading for the door, half supporting her weight. Come on, we're leaving right now. Half the class follows as Peterson continues yelling threats about our grades. We burst through the classroom door into the hallway, gasping for clean air like we've been underwater. The difference is immediate. Suddenly, I can breathe normally again. Principal Martinez appears almost instantly. She takes one look at our panicked faces and demands to know what happened. When we explain everything, the gas, Peterson refusing to let us leave, her face goes completely white. She immediately calls for building evacuation and the hazmat team. Two hours later, we're sitting outside watching guys in full protective suits emerge from our classroom, carrying equipment and shaking their heads grimly. Turns out, Peterson had mixed chemicals that should never go together, creating chlorine gas that could have hospitalized or killed us all. When confronted, Peterson said we were just being dramatic and that kids these days can't handle anything challenging. He was fired that afternoon and lost his teaching license permanently.